I think we're live. It's Friday again, which means time for another live stream. And today's going to actually be a pretty fun one. I'm just going to go ahead and enable my Wi-Fi. Why is this off? So you guys might remember Dr. Zaber, maker of the original Sentry, this like super small, basically console sized case that was able to hold a shockingly powerful system inside it. And they actually reached out to us just kind of randomly, what, about a week ago or something like that, Jake? Does that sound right? I think it was about a week or two ago. Anyway, they're following it up with a Sentry 2.0, and we figured, yeah, it'd be a lot of fun for us to do a build in it. So we actually posted a poll on YouTube uh, for members only, like channel members, and asked them if we should do our build in the, like, classical gray version of the chassis or if we should use the black one instead and they said to go with the black one I have my doubts though because I think a lot of them thought it was silver based on the picture but actually it's got this delightfully kind of retro gray computer look to it that, that I personally really like and no, we're just do we're doing the black. All right, can you take the can you take the gray one then? All right, thank you. Never mind, we're just gonna do the gray one. Also, what is this DHL thing? I have no idea. Oh, new O-rings. All right. So I have not looked at this at all. I am going in completely cold here, and I'm gonna do my best Ugh. to do a super sweet, super small build that is extra powerful. So in terms of hardware, we're going with an 8700K because that's what we had lying around. All of our 9700 and 9900Ks are presumably uh, occupado right now. And then uh, we're going with a Titan RTX for our graphics card. We're gonna see if this thing can handle it. And then, uh, oh wow, they have stepped up their packaging game quite a lot. That is pretty cool. So they still include this little stand if you want to set it up vertically. I wonder if they've also improved the rubber feet here. They still come off, but it would be hard for it to happen by accident now, which is nice. And, oh, they're, uh, they're kind of a harder rubber, so they don't like kind of grip too much and come off there either. Actually, these seem quite, these seem quite a lot better. Okay, neat. It's almost like they've had a couple of years to, uh, to refine their design there, you know? Cool. All right. So now what else we got in here? They include a screwdriver. Oh, well, it's Torx, the security Torx. Do you really need security Torx screws to put your computer together? All right. We've got a PCI Express 16X riser. We've got a PCI Express 16X extender. So presumably we are going to both rise and extend a little something like that. I don't know which camera I should be holding this up to, but uh, you know, whatever. There you go. What else we got here? Hey, this is almost like doing an unboxing, isn't it? It's fun. I'm having fun. Uh, speaking of fun, oh right, this video is brought to you by PIA. I actually didn't even think about doing the sponsor spot until I said speaking of, I was going to do something else entirely. Uh, private internet access is the VPN for you. Just head out, head to lmg.gg slash, uh, what is it Jake, PIA? I know PIA WAN works, so why don't you go ahead and do that one? Although WAN show isn't for a while yet. We're uh, doing WAN show, oh wow. WAN show, Whew. Ah, lmg.gg slash PIA Linus 2. S strongly recommend PIA, guys. You can install it on up to five devices at a time with a single account. It's really affordable. Um, they don't log user activity. Like, basically all the good things you could ask for from a VPN. PIA's got it. Clients for everything you, under the sun. Uh, go, go, go check them out. Do we have it linked in the video description? We have it linked in the video description. All right, anyway, we've got our power button here which I get to install myself. This build is going to take a little while. That much is already clear. Well, if the WAN shows late, you guys will know why. We've got, uh, looks like a little reinforcement bracket doodad. These guys are a really small company, so everything that they're doing is just like powder-coated steel. Like there's no kind of, you know, fancy tempered glass or anything like that. But personally, I have an appreciation for just the, the industrial, industrialness of their design. It looks to me, okay, to me, not everyone's going to like it, but it looks to me really clean 
and I'm, I'm actually a pretty big fan. So I'm going to put those there and hopefully not drop them. And I'm going to put these here and hopefully not drop them. And I'm going to worry um, that I actually don't see any instructions. So they did a really good job of safely packaging everything. But these kinds of cases generally are a little bit more on the complicated side to put together. And I guess I'm just going to be guessing here. Oh, thank you, Jake. That is so nice. See, to all you people who were saying that he was useless and annoying and obnoxious and loud and his voice sucks and his hair sucks and... Your voice. Oh, my voice. Sorry. Sorry. I, okay. So that I got one wrong. So to all of you people who were saying all of those things, shame on you. He clearly has his uses. Who else would have brought me this magnetic parts tray? I'm just kidding. You guys got to understand, like... Jake does all kinds of stuff around here that you probably wouldn't expect. I mean, we needed like something altered for our security for the building and he was like custom fabbing up a thing and he's, he's actually very, very, a very important member of the team. Anyone who still works here is a very important member of the team because if they weren't, they wouldn't. That's kind of, that's how, that's how business works. It's business time, you know? All right, so there's our top. It looks like they are still doing this. Uh, apparently in the original, this was for thermal reasons, but it's like, um, do you have a way of indicating to me what angle we're working with here, Jake? No, I'm David. Or David? If you, because if you can like throw something at David so he knows he doesn't have to hold still and like maintain focus, then it would be really nice for him. He's walking away. He's just leaving. He's done. <laughs> He's gone. He's gone. Uh, so they, they said that this here is for like thermal reasons or like airflow reasons. It's to keep from having like a dead zone here where warm air just kind of sits there. I, do, I don't know that I was ever super convinced that that was that important, but uh, apparently it made it into Rev 2, so they're, they're sticking with their story. And then, wow, other than that, it's just, it's just empty. So our graphics card's going to go right about here. Yeah. And our motherboard's going to go about here. Uh, it looks like they've moved the power supply since last time, I want to say. I'm not, even, I'm not even sure where that goes right now. And then, whoa! Okay. That's just, that's just coming off. So that's a thing. Huh, yeah, I do, uh, I do actually wish they had uh, some, some documentation included in the box. But you know what? We're going for it. We are, we are straight... YOLOing it. Wow. And it says on the side, uh, newest manual on our website. Newest manual on their website. It says on the side apparently. Of the box. Of the box. All right. Well, I will I will go I will probably end up having to look at that because this is a bit complicated. First, why don't we go ahead and do the things that we can do? So, we got our motherboard. Got our CPU. Let me just check my positioning here. Jake, what angle are we on? Yeah, yeah, okay. Zaber.com, zaber.com.pl slash sentry. All right, all right, okay, all right. I could have read the box. All right, all right. I'm rubbing it in. I swear he has redeeming qualities, you guys. I swear, I swear. It's true. It's a true story. <laughs> Heard it from a friend of a friend of mine, okay? <laughs> Wait, who was it? Was Jake? No, he's... The He's the one spreading all the propaganda. Uh, all right. We're going to go with Noctua for our cooler today. Super simple cooler to install. I actually love this thing. What is it? L9i? Yeah. Is that right? Love it. Now, it's not the highest performance cooler on the block by any stretch of the imagination, but it's just four simple screws that bolt through from the back, and it does a pretty good job for its size, although I wouldn't expect to be overclocking this 8700K at all. Um, I would expect to get, you know, pretty much close to full turbo, but maybe not even that. Um, it's going to come down really to our graphics card anyway, though. We're going to do some, maybe do some 4K gaming, something like that. All right, so we're going to check our orientation here. Go ahead and plug this into our CPU fan header. Um, are you going to switch to the overhead at any point, Jake? Yeah, you want to be yeah. Right. I mean, aren't I? I'm building the computer. Look, guys, I, sw I swear, I swear, he, he's, he's really good. 
He's really good at the things that he does that are good. Um, did you grab that M.2, by the way? Uh, Jakku? Uh, did you grab that M.2 from upstairs? No. Oh, no. Are we not doing that anymore? OK, this one has games on it now? You didn't do it, did you? Can you grab the M.2? <laughs> Look, guys, I swear. I swear. He's. The best part is like, oops. The best part is like Jake's parents watch our videos sometimes. <laughs> like especially if he's in them or like helping run them or whatever else. It's great. <laughs> so they definitely read the comments. Right. Man, honestly, I wish more coolers installed like this. I understand why with some of the bulky ones it doesn't necessarily make a ton of sense because then you're, uh, you've got like this gigantic tower on the other side of the motherboard that you're you know, trying to put down or whatever. Like it, yeah, I, I understand the challenges, but like that is so quick. It's so clean. It's awesome. All right. Now I'm just going to grab my, I love ITX boards. Just something about the density just gets me excited because you know when I first got into PC building like you wanted a high performance system it was in like some gigantic friggin tower it sounded like a hair dryer and now there's just so much performance on this tiny little form factor you got your 8 pin power for these high performance CPUs you got your USB 3.1 gen 2 connector um, for your fancy USB 3 front panels you've got a regular USB 3.0 clasp like style connector you've got four SATA you've got PCIe 16x you've got two M.2s one on the front one on the back they've taken to putting M.2 slots on the back of your motherboard now which is madness um, I don't know it's just it's just awesome hey Jake do you know if this board support oh I bet it doesn't this is a Z370 but uh, they've even got those new dims now that are, are up to 16 gigs unbuffered for like small form factor systems like this uh, hey, Jake, I had put my iFixit kit here. Do you know what happened to it? Oh, you cleared it from the table. I will be right back, Are you folks. Just doing the top down? Yeah, yeah. yeah, still on the top down. You, you could just like switch whenever. Um, I mean, you know, we've got a live operator. Loud just, noise. you know, well, no, don't make a loud noise. I just mean, I don't know, just, just like switch between them, you know, just, you know, for fun, you know, to make it dynamic, you know? Right, we're switching? All right, we're switching. Okay, well then, then just change to the top down. All right. I think we really need to do a video exploring these uh, these M.2 heat sinks, just because like I know that I know that other people have looked into them, but there's so many different types of them out there that I do wonder if you know some of them work better than others if they just all completely don't work at all like i've seen some pretty crazy stuff i think it's uh gigabyte i want to say it's either gigabyte or msi one of them with one of their boards it must have been msi actually included this like gpu freaking sized thing with this giant cooler on it that was a quad m.2 uh, pci express 16x card and i'm just like i look at something like that and i go like is there a performance advantage here why are we doing this? Um, I gotta know. I gotta imagine that just kind of putting a hunk of metal on top of it like this, one that doesn't dramatically increase the surface area, I gotta imagine that probably doesn't help much, but you gotta remember too, there's different kinds of like thermal solutions. There's the kind that's designed to dissipate heat, which if you have a giant, multi, like many finned heat sink like this, that's obviously that kind. And then you've got the kind that's just designed to absorb heat, where if you had like a, a bursty load, for example, uh, where all of a sudden you're, you're writing a bunch of data to it and then five minutes later it's over, this heat sink could help absorb that extra heat and then dissipate it later once the drive activity slows down a little bit. So it could help as kind of like a heat buffer, even if it doesn't increase thermal dissipation a whole heck of a lot. So, I don't know. It seems like 
it's kind of a complicated thing to try to properly answer. So I don't know how we would develop a test that would look at all these different scenarios. But, um, you know, part of me wants to say, well, all the manufacturers keep, they keep putting these, you know, heat sinks on them, so there must be a reason. But then we've seen stuff that they do, like putting cooling backplates on the back of graphics cards that don't actually do anything. So, uh, hey, Jake, where did you get this motherboard from? Oh, okay. Uh, it doesn't have an I.O. shield. Um, okay. So that's a little unfortunate. Um, it is B3388, and it does not have an I.O. shield. We might just have to live without the I.O. shield here, folks, because I don't think we're going to be able to... This is, this is the beauty of live, you know? This is what's beautiful about live. No I.O. shield. Look at that. Is that beautiful or what? I'm going to go with an or what. Um, yeah, I, I puked a little too. I'm sorry, you guys. That's OK. I'm over it now. All oh, right, so I'm not going to be using my Phillips head screwdriver to install my motherboard. Instead, I will be using security torques. What is up with that, you guys? That's so weird. Dr. Zaber, I, you just, I just don't get it. Uh, I'm not going to put in too many screws here, though, because right now I'm just kind of mapping out where things go. Um, I suspect I still have a fair number of things to install for the case itself, like, for example, this. So we got to put our power connector in. Oh. Oh, that's funny. I kind of accidentally did that right, I guess, because it looks like before I can even put this in, I'm going to have to put in that motherboard screw because I'm not actually going to be able to. Can you switch to overhead? You got to be. <laughs> Jake, can you pay attention, please? <laughs> Thank you. Um, oh, this is actually really complicated. So when this is in here, you can't really get at the bottom of the back thing. Uh, or with the motherboard in, you can't really get at the bottom of the back, like right in there. And then with this in, you can't really get at this motherboard screw. So that's kind of the challenge of, uh, of these hyper-compact systems, I guess. Interesting. Well, one thing I know we need for sure. Oh, this is a Phillips head. Oh, lordy. This is going to get worse before it gets better. So I'm going to assume that we're using a Phillips head for this ground here. I'm just going to, there we go, get our ground attached to the case. Ugh, there we go. And then we're going to try to put our power plugs. So because the power supply is going to be installed probably over here in the case, We're going to have to run this extension like this in order to actually plug our power supply into the wall. Now, in terms of the way it's intended to go in, this there's a really weird gap here. Like, who made this? Tesla? Hey. See that? Though there's like a big there's a big old gap. Well, I don't I don't know. Like All right, let's see. Right. Oh, wow. The the torque screws and the Phillips ones are all threaded the same. So you have no way of knowing which one's which unless you just look at the manual, which I think we all knew wasn't going to be happening here. Uh, dang it, you guys. OK, so that's on. I'm probably doing everything wrong. Jake, you got to tell me if the comments are helping me. Are, 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 they, uh, are they trying to be helpful? Take that, Elon. Take that, Elon. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, YouTube comments. You guys fully meet my expectations. Someone said the IO shield is in the desk. The IO shield is in the desk? What? Why are you? Pull the cord through the hole. Pull the cord through the hole. Uh, oh. That is it. Hey! I knew we were streaming this live for a reason. 
Nice. That's great. Are we on David or overhead right now? Can we switch? Yeah, switch to David. That is fantastic. Ha! Huh. You guys are great. What a tremendous idea. And then I think what we're going to do is we're going to use black screws for that one. We're going to assume that the black ones are for external stuff. So this is going to go through here. There we go. That explains it. Gorgeous. Now it's still really hard to screw this in while it's in, so I am going to put the motherboard screw in the corner here in first. But now I think we can successfully install all three or four screws that we have to deal with in this tiny little corner here. I'm also going to do that ground wire now. Cool. I'm having fun. I actually really, really like small cases. I don't know how well they actually sell, though. That's the thing. Because, like, there's expansion issues, you know? Dude, the motherboard is so bent. Motherboard's bent? Uh, the motherboard is bent from stuff on it. It's heavy. Oh, 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 yeah, that cooler, uh, that cooler tightens down really tight. I was kind of thinking of easing it off a little bit, but then I was like, I don't know, Noctua is generally pretty good about, yeah, they, they usually get the, uh, Intel's guidelines right in terms of the force you're supposed to apply to the socket. So I was like, I don't know, I guess I'll just leave it. Um, it's not like I've never... Kill the CPU installing a cooler too tight before. Yeah, uh, actually board, sorry, not a CPU. Remember that uh, that stupid PFSense project, the old one? Oh, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, everyone thought that I was killing the board by like, oh, I forget what the stupid thing they thought I was killing the board by doing was. It made no sense. Right, by, uh, by shaving the plastic down off of the integrated speaker on the motherboard. They were like, obviously, you're taking a Dremel to the motherboard nuts, killing it. It's like, no, that's not killing it. It's plastic. That doesn't do anything. Um, like, I, I don't know how to talk to you people when you're saying <laughs> things like that. Uh, so yeah, no, that was not the issue. The issue was actually that the, um, the cooler that we had was for a slightly different, one of the other 11.5 something sockets. And apparently the specs for the, uh, the mounting pressure was slightly different. So we ran into trouble uh, because we were tightening it too much. And it was causing the board to flex too much. And there just wasn't enough um, extra tolerance there to uh, allow for it. And it just was destroying them. So I killed like two boards like that. It was really frustrating because especially this, because especially because I had to mod it in order to get it to fit. Um, so I had to do all this work and then I finally install it and it's like broken again. Okay, so that's how that goes on. Is that in focus or is that just like totally out of focus? Yeah, it's got Close out of focus. Enough? Yeah. So, oh. oh, really? Whatever's in the center. Oh, that's uh, pretty cool. Neat. Cool. All right. So now we've got this run for our power supply. Now it's time for us to figure out some of this stuff. Oh boy. Uh, hmm. Nope. You know what? Let's do our front USB first. So this little guy is going to go, now this one obviously doesn't pull through the front. This one actually screws in the way that we expect. And we're going to follow the rules of USB. It says your shoes are untied. My shoes are untied. Haha. <laughs> oh, that's very funny. Thank you. Did you know that there's like a conspiracy theory going around that none of our live streams are actually live? I don't know. Well, there was one that we did recently. Dale just said, is the Verge video, is this a Verge video retake? Is this a Verge video? No. I'm not doing anything that wrong. Maybe a little wrong, but like, come on, let's be fair, okay? <laughs> um, yeah, no, there was one we did recently where I was in a hurry or something, and I didn't end up actually reading any comments, I don't think. And so I saw, I saw a comment on it after the fact where someone was like, yeah, it's it's not live. Just like all of their quote unquote live streams, and I was like, "What? What are you? What, what are you even talking about? <laughs> what, is the point? what? And we and we do we do read comments like all the time, on most of them. I, just, I don't understand the logic. What well, I think the so. The logic behind live streaming, um, or like pretending to be live, I think is is more tied to like like Twitch streaming. 
culture where that can actually have a benefit. Like pretending to be live is a way for you to go on vacation, um, but not have your not like have your channel affected by uh, by not being there. Um, but the thing is that on YouTube, if we wanted to if we wanted to create content while we can't go live, we would just upload a video. So yeah, like there's no like there's there's no reason to do that. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's folks that are more that are more focused on live that might see some benefit to to doing something like that, but we are not uh, we are not one of them. Okay, I have to confess, Jake, can you be my manual guy? Because I'm a little bit confused again here. You have to help David. Oh, is, does yeah, he need the tight, thing tensioned? Tight. Too tight. All right. Okay. Well, I think that's how that goes in. Now, where did the pieces of the case go? Uh, what do you need? I need to know how the PCI Express riser goes in, because I'm a little confused. On the one hand, there were like a bunch of pieces here, and I was confused. And then now, I feel like there's not really enough pieces, and like I need more pieces. Like, how do you secure this thing? It's got these mounting holes right here by the socket, but there's nothing to screw them into. Also, what does this do? What, what is this bracket for? I don't know. Yeah, I could do that, but this is more fun. I'm, I'm, having, I'm having fun, Jake. That's what these streams are all about. Just like having a good... You can put a liquid cooler in this thing? How on earth would you do that? Oh, a stubby graphics card. Okay, so yeah, last time around, I believe they had options for like mounting a bunch of SSDs over here in the event that uh, you had a, a short graphics card. But apparently now you can put an AIO liquid cooler there. That's that's pretty cool, so to speak. I I don't think we're gonna do that because we're not ready. This is the bracket for the riser. That kind of looks like it. Okay. It's hard to explain without just looking at the manual. Oh, okay. No, I think I see it. I think I see it. I think it's like, uh, I think it's something to do with these two holes here. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, it looks like that goes there. And then uh, the bracket, or the riser, rather, seems like it just kind of goes, goes in there or something. Yeah. Heck yeah. So then that kind of secures it or something. Hmm. Does it? That's kind of weird. I'm looking at the manual and I still don't understand how it's supposed to work. So it just like sits there and just kind of sandwiches it? OK. All right. I'm, I'm into it. No, I'm not checking the manual. This is, this is a manual-less stream, fully automatic. Look, I'm not having this conversation again, David. I don't even think you were on the side of the people who believed in automatic transmissions. I'm what on are you? Side. Yeah. Oh, we're still to no, you're just trying to stir up trouble. <laughs> yeah. We should just do a uh, Twitter poll. Like, no, Twitter. we're not doing a Twitter. We're not. No, we're. No, we're not. We're not. Internet. We're not polling people on a tech channel about their favorite kind of car transmission. That, no, no, we're not. No, we're not doing. You can't. Up, you can't. You can't I post can't. that. I will. You can. No, right <laughs> you can, but you shouldn't. <laughs> oh man, see, I take so much flack around here because people see me like, you know, burning you guys or saying things that are mean or whatever. You do that a lot. And the, yeah, I, yeah, I know I do it a lot, but you guys, quite frankly, are asking for it for the most part. Oh yeah. Like. Honestly, especially Jake. Like instead, you see, do you see his hand? Do you see his hand in his pouch there? It's because instead of manning the live stream, he was on his phone, like a millennial. I know, I know, you're not a millennial. Even worse, you're gonna be the generation that the millennials complain about. That's right. What is your generation even called? Do you guys even have a name? You don't identify as having a name. Gen Z is that what they're called? Gen Z. Or Gen Y. And Gen Y was before us. Yeah, no, 
X was before us, I think. X was automatic. <laughs> automatic. Oh. No. 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 Uh, don't we have one of uh, Corsair's short cable kits for this power supply? D did you think to check? Because this is kind of a. You looked. I don't think there was one there. You didn't see one. Oh, okay. Because I thought we had one of Corsair's uh, first party. First party ones for this. Yeah. Okay. I'm on David. Okay. I'm gonna try and. I'm gonna try and figure out how to install this. And are you quite sure that this power supply fits in here? SFX compatible, you say? Okay. Cause uh, it's not looking real promising right about now. Oh wait. Oh, I see it. Goes on this side. Yeah, baby. And wait, am I on top down? Oh. I n See, I got ahead of myself. I went and I did the front USB, and uh, now you can't screw in the power supply once you've put in the front USB. And this is why there are manuals. This is why there are manuals. See? Now you're on the manual side. <laughs> yeah. uh, actually, I'm going to go with user guide. This is why you never go full auto. You can't control the recoil. All right? How will you control the recoil? Yeah, that's next fold. Burst fire or auto? Burst fire or auto. Yeah, that's not even a question. Single Single fire? Shotgun. Just tapping single fire is better than auto. Must be close. Depends on the guns, man. Depends on the game. And yeah, it really does depend on the game. Okay, they can't hear you guys, so like <laughs> if you guys are just <laughs> Look, I'm not i I'm not saying you guys can't talk on the stream. I'm just saying you should yeah. Probably get mic'd up if you're going to talk on the stream. <laughs> what the heck? Uh, oh, I guess they expect me to use the screws that are included with yeah, my power supply. Me and Jake are millennials, but we aren't anything like them. I was like, no, I'm not. No, yeah, no, no. Jake is literally not a millennial. He's like 17 or something. <laughs> Single fire. <laughs> it's funny because you're not even that much older than that. Oh, Roman's in the chat? Yeah. Hey, Roman. I got actually, um, dude, I got to bug you about um, AMD Epic overclocking. Apparently, that's a thing. And um, we want to get our hands on one of, uh, or actually, ideally, a couple of AMD's Epic processors for um, some video transcoding benchmarks. Drop one. So we're, what? No, I'm not going to drop one of them. I will be very, very careful with them. Um, but yeah, uh, Floatplane wants to take advantage of the new 10 gig connection that we got here at the office. So we were actually kind of thinking we would put a transcode server here. Um, and we want to play around with AMD versus Intel versus GPU and get some sort of real world numbers. Um, but what I was kind of thinking it would be pretty cool to overclock the AMD CPUs. And I saw that Der Bauer had, um, a video that he uploaded overclocking AMD's Epic server processors. So I uh, figured it would be pretty neat to do something like that, like Intel Xeon versus AMD Epic versus AMD Epic overclocked, because what could be more epic than an overclocked server? Pretty sick. Like, to, just to be clear, we actually, um, hey Jake, is the overclocked Intel server video up on YouTube already, or is that only on Floatplane right now? Uh, it's only on Floatplane. Only on Floatplane? Okay. So we actually have a video coming up where we use, not for, not as like a, like a, like an over the internet video transcode server, but as like a local video transcode server. So we have an Intel based one from Gigabyte that's actually really cool. It's water cooled, it's overclockable, but the issue is that it's not actually Xeon based. So there's nothing really that servery about it other than that it's in a 1U like rack mountable case. Uh, otherwise, it could just as easily be a random desktop board with a uh, 7900X in it, which is the CPU that we happened to use. So by contrast, AMD's Epic CPUs supposedly actually have unlocked multi multipliers. So you can actually overclock their actual server class ones. So what's up? Put the bottom rubber feet on. You have to do it before the motherboard. 
to put the rubber feet on. Oh, uh oh. Uh, you can just do the vertical yeah. I think. Yeah, I wanted to do the vertical mount anyway. Uh, hold on a second. Actually, wait, what? Really? Oh, yeah, if you want to put the bottom feet on, you gotta, you gotta, uh, uh, do that beforehand. Oh, boy. Um, you know what? I can make that work. How does the vertical mount work? I got this. Uh, the vertical mount just, like, slots into this, this doodad here, so it should be fine. <laughs> oh, boy. Is that Roman giving me advice, or is that just a random in the chat? Random in the chat. Um, you know what? I've actually thought for a long time that there is a great business opportunity making custom IO shields. Because honestly, think about it. It couldn't be that hard from a picture. Like obviously there'd be exceptions. Like some really, you know, wacko motherboards in non-standard form factors or whatever else. But for like standard ATX boards, it couldn't be that hard to figure out a way to mostly automate the process of taking a picture of the back of a motherboard and you know kind of figuring out exactly what the dimensions are based on some known some known items like the size of a USB port um, and then I think there has got to be a business in replacing lost IO shields because I personally have had probably a probably dozens of IO shields that I would, was like you know what this doesn't really matter it's not like it affects performance but Boy, would I love to have a new one for this because this is really frustrating. And if you could do it for like, you know, 10, 15 bucks plus ship, what's up? Oh, I'm gonna take that off. Uh, if you can do it for like 10, 15 bucks plus shipping or something like that, I think people would pay for it. I think, why is there a Titan RTX for that? I think there's an opportunity there. Why is there a Titan RTX? Why wouldn't there be a Titan RTX? What else would we put in here? You know? If you, if you got it, you flex it, right? Yeah. <laughs> and they're asking why there's no IO shield. Uh, yeah, there's no IO shield because it's missing. Because Jake lost it. Actually, we don't know that Jake lost it. We just suspect that Jake lost it, that's all. Uh, okay, so we're actually in pretty good shape other than that um, we didn't put the feet on. But I think we could still, oh wow, no, the board is not coming out. We would have to take this off. We would have to, yeah, no, this is, this is a bad time. This would be a really, really, really bad time to, uh, to get everything out now. So, yep, we're, we're vertical mounting. All right. Let's do some cable management here. Yeah, actually, David, if you just want to indicate to Jake which one you want, based on you having apparently much better game sense than him in terms of... Uh, what the viewers should be looking at, and that would oh, work great. To tell a story, that's fine. I always I tell stories. That's what I do. All right, so that's in there. I'm just going to turn that power supply on now, so that I don't forget. Doesn't matter as long as I don't plug it into the wall. There's no uh, there's no drawback to that. Now we're just going to go ahead and tuck these cables in here. All right, not bad. Actually, even though I don't have a short cable kit, this is coming together pretty nicely. Power button. Uh, power button. Yeah, yeah, okay, power button, we got this. Thank you, thank you. I actually really like these, uh, I forget what they're called, I think vandal, vandal proof or anti-vandal, whatever that means. I don't understand what is vandal resistant about them exactly, but basically you just feed them through nice uh, cutout hole like this one. Boop, really clean looking. And they have these really nice ones now that have an integrated LED ring. So just with two buttons, you can have your power and your reset. And then you can have your power LED and your drive activity LED. Which apparently, I have just been informed quite recently, is not cool anymore. Drive LEDs, not cool. Why? So Jake, you were the one telling me that you, it's the first thing you unplug. Why on earth would you do that? You don't plug in. You don't uh, plug in. It's just, it's just distracting. It's not distracting. What? Now, how else would you? Okay, so a couple things. One, I'm not saying how how else? Useful. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. I need a chance to I need a chance to to argue my position here. So, so one, how would you know then if your drive is active? And number two is why are you watching movies off of your hard drive or your SSD when you should have a NAS like a real man? Well, I don't I don't have enough stuff to store on a NAS. You don't have enough stuff to store on a NAS. Okay, so. 
Why don't you? Why don't you have enough stuff to store on a NAS like a real man? I'm just, I'm just asking. I'm just I'm asking questions. Because right, you're Gen Z. Process. You figured me out. Uh, okay, this is going to be a little tricky to install, but that's fine. We got this. Power switch. I kind of ran all these cables before doing the uh, power switch and the power LED, and they are under all the cables, but that's fine. I am a pretty experienced header plugger inner, although I have been known to make mistakes from time to time and edit them out. Actually, it's a funny thing. Like People, I think, feel like we make a ton of mistakes when we do things, but I think a big part of the reason for that is that we don't edit them out. Um, you know, we leave them in. And, like, I don't know. It's, uh, on the one hand, I think it's, it, like, damaged our reputation sometimes uh, because, you know, we'll, sometimes we'll try things. And, you know, sometimes it's, a, it's actually a spectacularly stupid idea. And other times, like, it's honestly not. It's not really any different from what someone at home, you know, might have tried. Um, but we're, you know, we have, you know, we're, we're willing to, to put ourselves out there and say, yeah, we tried this, and here was the result. And if nothing else, you know, the way we feel is that it, like, it answers someone's question. Because if we were wondering if it works, then someone, somewhere, was probably wondering if it works and if it's a good idea, and now, they know without damaging their hardware. So this guy said you should uh, hook up your drive that somebody gave away. Stand that behind it. Make your whole house wow, that is a great idea. You know what, Jake? I'm putting you on that project. Philips Hue activated by your hard drive activity LED. Yeah. So like, it's like, yeah, we're loading that game. <laughs> Switching levels, <laughs> that'd be awesome. Sort of. So stupid. I, 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 I love it though. That's hilarious. Oh man, thank you community. It's like, this is why we can never run out of ridiculous ideas because every time we think we're close, I'll just like go on the forum or fire up Twitter and people be like, can you cool a GPU by just like throwing it in an ice cold bath? I'm like, gee, yeah, I don't know. Good question. Why don't we find out? <laughs> cool a MacBook or cool a MacBook by putting it in a puddle? Yeah, <laughs> or like that. Actually, that was my idea. That was not a community submitted idea, <laughs> if I recall correctly. So, it, oh yeah, it worked really well. But it's not actually what I wanted to do. So here's the thing. Um, can we switch to David? Thanks, David. Um, so here's the thing. What I had actually wanted to do for that project, where what we, what we kind of did, oh wow, am I going to be able to plug this in? Whew, this, is, this is getting real tight here. Yeah, the front USB. Yeah, no, I figured it out. I'm going to go through here, and then I'm going to go over here. So what I had actually wanted to do with that project, where we took a, a MacBook, and basically, uh, I think the bottom of it was unibody, so I didn't really have to do anything, but we pretty much put it in a puddle of like ice water, um, but not fully submerged, so it was just making contact with the, the back of the, the MacBook, which was a passively cooled machine. And I, I was trying to see if we could get a performance boost, like if there was, if the hardware had more to give if it was properly cooled. And uh, yes, it, it did, and it actually worked really well. But the concept, the original concept for that video was something kind of different. Um, I, what I had wanted to try to find was, uh, you know, what would be an example of something like this? Like, um, man, have you ever seen like those, those really thin foil, like, uh, like, you know a hot water bottle? Like, you, know, you guys know hot water bottles, like those rubber things? Okay, and like, can you, can you imagine for a second, like a really thin foil hot water bottle? Okay, like, so like, like, things they put in camelbacks? Um, things they put in camelbacks, maybe? Maybe kind of like that, yeah, like a, like a metal like a metal foil like bag, kind of, you know. Um, and so I've been trying to find something like this ever since then. Like periodically, I'll be like, because I don't know what it's called or what it would be called, but I'm sure it exists. So uh, some kind of a conductive layer, flexible bag that can hold a liquid that, that's watertight. Because everyone out there is making notebook coolers 
that frankly don't work very well because all they can do is like blow air at the bottom of your laptop. And we've tested them before. They don't seem to really do a whole lot of much. Um, whereas if you could make a notebook cooler that made physical contact with a large amount of the bottom of your device and that actually had cool water circulating through it with an external radiator, I think you could get really similar results to what we did with our MacBook there, but without actually having the water come in contact with the laptop, which is really stupid for very obvious reasons um, and something you would only want to do very, very temporarily. We should probably revisit, uh, you know, phone and laptop water cooling. It's been long enough that we could probably uh, we could like a, take some modern devices and... Stand with like a cold plate. Although yeah, but the, the cold plate, yeah, the good. thermal transfer would suck. And if you had something that was more flexible, then you wouldn't have to worry about that so much. So that was, that was actually the somewhat legitimately good idea that spawned that video. <laughs> At least I, I think it was a legitimately good idea. Yeah, no, thermal pad would be nasty. Um, okay, so SSD mount looks like it goes over here. This is one packed friggin' case, man. Like, this is nuts. Yeah, I put the M.2 in. Yeah, <laughs> thankfully. Because if, if I was trying to figure that out now, yeah, you know what? Forget it. Yeah, M.2 is the, the past, the present, and the future now, man. Not even because, like, I think the performance difference is especially noticeable, you know, when you're firing up Apex Legends or whatever the kids are playing these days, but just because it's, like, small, it's compact, you know? It's the, it's the future, baby. Hey, look, I can play Apex Legends with the best of them. They will also be in the game while I am there, so I can play with the best of them. Yeah, for a short period of time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that would. No, as a squad. Ed, yeah. Ed, Ed, David, and Linus. <laughs> could Shroud and Ninja carry me? Yeah, they could. You think so? They're so good. The game is kind of I don't know. Friendly. I'm pretty bad. <laughs> it's pretty humiliating. <laughs> All right. What did you drop? A screw. It's fine. Ah, I got it. All good. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so was that the whole build? This actually was pretty painless. Yeah, what else is what else is left? I feel like I'm missing something. I really feel like I'm missing something. Am I missing something? <laughs> also, there's like twice as many screws as I needed. It looks like there's an entire set of silver and an entire set of black. Is that just an option? Like, is that mentioned in the manual? Because so far I haven't needed a single silver screw. Like, am I going to get to a point where all of a sudden I go, oh, well, now I need all the black screws. Oops. Everyone's saying Ninja's trash at Apex. Nin is Ninja bad at Apex? Oh, all right. Well, I don't know. Like, look, I, I, don't, I don't know. I, don't even, I hardly even know what game the kids are playing, let alone, like, who's good at it. So I... I'm hiding behind that defense. How could you expect me to know anything if I clearly know nothing? Is that even a defense? Uh, GPU power. Uh, GPU power, yes, we will need that. Cool. Man, I still really like this case. Honestly, they haven't changed that much. It's little tweaks. Like, I guess it's appropriate that they called it the Sentry 2.0 because it's still a really, really similar internal layout. But what I do like is that it was pretty easy to manage my cables, even though I don't have custom cable mod ones, making things even a little bit easier. And uh, yeah, the fact that they've now figured out how to throw an AIO liquid cooler in there is pretty freaking cool. Pardon the obvious, obvious, terrible, obvious pun. All right, let's go ahead and do this. I feel like I should be like checking if there, I, oh yeah, I could have had the chat up the whole time. That's why I put my laptop there and then I totally forgot. I got distracted. I got distracted building computers. Like, can you really blame me? Okay. Um, the WAN <laughs> show starts in, yes, 35 minutes. I am aware of that. Thank you. Now this is a little tricky. We've got a modular power supply and 
you can see, or maybe you can see, but there's not a lot of clearance. Are you on the overhead? You can see there's not a lot of clearance for our power button. So plugging this in looks like it might be a bit of a problem, and there's a chance that our power button will no longer work when we're done. Um, there's only one way for us to find out, though, by measuring. Asked Wait. There's another way. The MSI Titan what now? Titan X. Trident X. Oh, why is it better? Well, I don't know. You can build it yourself for one thing. But no, I wouldn't say it's especially better. It is smaller. It's quite a bit smaller. Like the, the thing about small form factor off the shelf computers is that they're like, how do I put this? They're like, you know, validated. Um, you know, MSI, particularly with that one, didn't even try to go that small. They tried to go really, really high performance and like pretty small-ish. Whereas this is full small. Like I'm expecting both our Titan RTX and our 8700K to throttle at least a little bit. I mean, especially this poor Titan. It's dual eight pin power connectors in a case that's like smaller, that's actually not much bigger than some external GPU enclosures, except that it also contains a CPU, RAM, motherboard, etc. Dunk it in ice water, yeah, it'll be no problem. Titan RTX, cooled by ice water. Then we'll have a video on trying to fix a Titan RTX. <laughs> <laughs> trying to fix it? Oh man, I have not had good luck with my trying to fix videos lately. So there was that one that we weren't even sure if it was an upload, uh, where I tried to like glue the CPU back together because it was like mechanically separated. Um, and people were mad. They were like, this is stupid. He didn't even succeed. I'm like, yeah, okay, fair enough. And then I have the one that we filmed earlier this week, David, where, um, what was the problem with that CPU? Game? Right. So I thought the issue was that we got some, uh, some liquid metal that like seeped out, seeped off the die and shorted something. But then we opened it up and that wasn't the problem. But then we tried like cleaning it up anyway and, and, and putting it back together. And then that didn't work. So that was like, I don't know, two hours of shooting time wasted. I think we're actually going to upload that video anyway, but not to YouTube because people got so, so just, uh, what, what is it? Um, tilted. tilted. Thank you. I was thinking twisted, but I knew that wasn't right. People got very tilted. Um, no, I was, I was going to go with tilted because I think triggered is like old now, right? I don't think Triggered's cool anymore. You should, you should just say oof. Should, no, I don't like oof. I like woof. You don't like Roblox? Uh, it's not that I don't like Roblox. I just you don't know what Roblox is. You need to play Roblox to keep a uh, PewDiePie, or keep PewDiePie. Yeah. No, I, I, I prefer woof. Also, subscribe to PewDiePie. S subscribe to PewDiePie. <laughs> it's like bot harder, guys. Bot harder, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so you're not botting hard enough. Uh, I forget what I was even talking about. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> this is why I script all my stuff now, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, right, that video. So I think we're going to just cut it together, like barely edit it at all, and then just like chuck it up on Floatplane. And if people like it, they like it. And if they don't, well, then they don't have to watch it. Uh, oh, man, that's dense. Like, like, listen to that. Boom, it's heavy. I love this thing. All right. We're going to go ahead and pop this puppy on here. Wait, did you put the side panel on before seeing if it posts? I did put the side panel on before seeing if it posts. I am, yeah, this is, this is bad, bad jeebies. Bad jubies? I don't know, it's bad something bees. Oh, gorgeous. Man, I love this case. And that didn't even take that long to build. How long have we even been streaming? It doesn't say. Well, whatever. Not bad. Let's fire it up. I'm going to just put some stuff away here. I'm going to set a good example for all our viewers back home. Okay, when you're working on your build, please make sure that you uh, put everything away and keep everything together as you go because otherwise you are going to regret it. Get my Livestrong bracelet on? You betcha. You can't tell I'm wearing it on my ankle. <laughs> So it's on my ankle, Jake. Actually, you know what? There's a, there's a different foot here. I don't even know what this foot's for. I guess this is if you don't have a graphics card that's like 
hardcore mode. Uh, wow, that is a long power cable. Thank you very much. Nice. Uh, do we have like keyboard and mouse and all that kind of good stuff? You're working on it? I swear, he's like really good at some things. Grabbing keyboard for the mouse, I guess. Okay, do you think it's going to post first time? Uh, <laughs> Wait, what's this bracket for? Well, no one knows. And now we'll put it in there. Someone in chat probably knows, because they probably subscribed to Floatplane, or subscribed to Kyle on Floatplane, and they probably saw his build in this thing already. I saw him upload a video, so I was just like, oh yeah, that thing. Um, but his video is going to be way better than this one, because my understanding is he didn't just like do it live with no manual. So yeah, you guys are going to want to go check that out if you're actually looking to build a system in this thing, because it's more of like a step-by-step -step guide. Uh, for those of you who don't know who I'm talking about, uh, Kyle or Bitwit, he changes his brand a lot. So uh, you know it's understandable if you don't know who he is. You know? uh, no, he didn't change it to something not stupid. It's Bitwit. I think that's pretty stupid. It's better than it's better than awesome sauce news or whatever it was before. So he's got that going for him. And yes, in fairness to him, it's better than Linus Media Group because like your name is Linus and you're completely devoid of any creative thoughts. <laughs> I just couldn't figure out what to call the company. <laughs> like I wanted to describe what we do. So like <laughs> media and like yeah, David, I, I want it to be like I want it to be like who it is who's doing it. Um, oh, can I actually have an Ethernet cable, Jake? Oh, uh, am I using, oh, you can't, did you unplug that for me? Uh, that would be swell. It'd be su super cool. Oh, good. I thought you were going to unplug the stream card. I'm going to get myself a, no, no, I didn't unplug the stream card. It's all good. Okay. I'm going to sit in the trendy chair today. Um, no, I didn't get one, but yeah, that's long enough. Cool. Uh, that chair's too low. Really? Really, Jake? Just throw it on the ground. And also, no, it's not long enough. Bring me a different one. Do it again. Actually, it's long enough. It's fine. It's long enough. No, no, don't. You're killing me here. All right. Here we go. Am I going to? No, I'm not going to drop it. I don't actually drop that much stuff, you guys. OK. Ah. Oh, this is not comfortable. Why? Is furniture like this cool? It's stupid. Oh man, it's awful. What? It's, you're saying it's not stupid? No, it's not cool. It's not cool? <laughs> well, why does it exist then? That's the only reason most stupid stuff exists, because it's cool. Well, this is, this is awful. OK, here we go. Oh, it's supposed to have a cushion. Oh, maybe, I don't know. Is it like a booster seat? Yeah, I don't know. All right. Yeah, you know what? No, no, forget it. Forget it. Okay, here we go. I see that Titan lit up, top down. Yeah, me too. I don't see this monitor lit up though. Did I forget to plug it in? I think I did. Eh. Eh. Uh, oh wait, what? Oh. Uh, wait, did you? Did? Yeah. What? No. Oh, do you mind? Uh, yeah. Do you mind grabbing another power cable? <laughs> Thanks, Jake. Thank you. Oh, wait, there's one over there. There's one behind the island. He's down. He's I'll probably have it before he does. Oh, Race. oh I tripped over the Ethernet. Ah, I got to get it. Got to get it first. Yes. OK. Yeah. Got this. Ah, yeah. OK, cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. Cool, thanks. There you go. No, I found one. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to throw it so fast. <laughs> All right. Input. Display port. Well, sometimes display port can be kind of stupid. So we'll go ahead and. Oh, that turned off right away. That was not good. Maybe it was just like new CPU installed, though. Like maybe it was sitting at the post screen. Let's hope. Let's hope that it's going to work because otherwise. We, yeah, we're, pretty, we're just going to have to end the stream here. <laughs> well, you guys, that was it. That was how to build a non-functional computer in this case. Oh, there we go. Nice. Beautiful. 
Beauty. Did our M.2 uh, show up? Yes, it did. We've got our 16 gigs of RAM showing up, our 8700K showing up. Everything seems to be working. Well, ain't that fantastic? Boot override, boom. Here we go. See, I sort of know what I'm doing, that I pretend that it works. I mean, I can't fake this, can I? I probably could. There could be a computer in here. And there actually is sort of some components of a computer in there. I don't know if you can see that. But that's the remnants of the cleanest desk PC setup. So it's just a power supply and an Akidio uh, Thunderbolt DPU enclosure. Why is that still in here? Oh, wow, the Thunderbolt dock is still here and everything. Oh, I guess we could get this up and running again pretty quickly. Huh? That's pretty cool. I am very curious to see how well this poor uh, Titan RTX survives in here. That is a rough, rough situation. Here, I'm just going to scooch over a little bit more, David, so you can get a better angle. Maybe you can get a look at how tightly that graphics card is packed in there. Check that out. Oh, sorry, was that... Oh yeah, well the laptop is here so that I can read chats, which I just kept, I kept forgetting to do. Um, can you put a Trident X next to it? Shoot, I think the Trident X is back in inventory. No, is it right there? Oh, thanks, Alex. Do you mind bringing it over? Cool. Yeah, so we can show you guys the Trident X next. It's trust me, it's a lot smaller. Um, probably the new one, I would think. How about my name is Linus and this is my company? Yeah, that wouldn't have been better, I don't think. Uh, cool. Apparently the cooling thing I described is called an HTP pad. About 20 bucks or so to make a laptop cooler out of it because I had the same idea, says Jeremy. How interesting. HTP pad. Huh. All right. Did this just reboot in like a bad way or a good way? Uh, like a, your right away. Okay, so here you go, guys. Thank you, Alex. So that is not the same size as that at all. Like they're in a similar class where they're both, you know, compact desktops. But you can, like, you can really see in the terms of the thinness. Like, if you were trying to, you know, slide your gaming computer, and or maybe it's not a gaming machine. Maybe you do like a more modest build in it. If you were trying to like slide it into your desk or something, this is not doing that. But this is. It's really, really compact. And then in terms of the uh, the depth as well, I now have them set back the same amount. So if you switch angles here, David, and go this way, uh, where you are. Yeah. If you go from where I am, you can really see how much further out the Trident X comes compared to the Sentry 2.0. Right You're top down right oh, now? Right oh, OK. All right. Well, cool. Jake is apparently top down right now, and he's giving you guys a better shot. All right. So why don't we just start with some good old-fashioned Prime 95, get that H HW monitor. Boom. <laughs> Excuse me? Do you even use SciSoft Sandra? All right, task manager. Excuse me, can I speak to a manager, please? Yeah. The task manager. Um, all right, so our package is sitting right in the neighborhood of 90 to 95 degrees. It's pretty toasty. Oof, oof, we just dropped down to 3.5 gigahertz. Um, I wonder if, actually, I. Mm, I haven't had trouble loading things up with Prime 95. I just wonder if this motherboard is configured to not hold uh, turbo for as long. Because here, if I, I bet if I stop it, give it the old stop rooney here, and then I'm going to fire it up again. Options, torture test, small FFT, blah, blah. We're going to jump right to almost 4 gigahertz again, and we're up in that 90 to 95 degrees Celsius range, and then I bet it's going to, it's going to drop down a little bit. So this, this workload might not be cooperating with us, but that's fine, because we probably also have something else that we could throw at it. Huh, you know what we could do? 
is we could even just like try to play 8K footage. I've got Red Cine X on here. <laughs> that would give us a pretty good idea. So it's turbo boosting really nicely right now. Uh, let's go on our remote drive Z. Uh, Linus, we have a video coming that I'm really excited about where we're testing out NVIDIA's um, CUDA acceleration of real-time 8K playback. And I'm not going to use it right now because I want to hit the CPU, but um, it's, it does take some faffing about in order to get it working. So it's like kind of a pain in the butt, but it's really, really cool. And we show a bunch of the different ways that you can um, that you can accelerate playback of this, whether it's with CPU or GPU, and uh, it, yeah, it's it's pretty impressive anyway. So let's go ahead and play that, and that should hit us pretty hard. Oh, we might be network bottlenecked though. Oh no, we're not actually. Interesting. Oh yeah, there we go. Now we're up near 90% CPU. And we're still turboing to 4.3 gigahertz, so that's not bad. But we're up near that 90 degree mark. Either way, it's clear because you'll never see 85, 90% CPU usage while you're gaming. It's clear that our CPU is going to be fine when we're gaming. And we're going to be seeing pretty darn near full turbo on this thing. So that's pretty nice. And this is a very real-world workload. Not quite the heaviest one that we could throw at it, but it's pretty abusive. Uh, this is 30 FPS, 4K, 7 to 1 compression, excuse me, 4K, 8K, 7 to 1 compression ratio red footage. And it's just me goofing around just because we needed a test clip. Normally, we shoot it more like 20 to 1. So uh, yeah, we recorded this apparently because we're goofballs. Hey, there we go. We are getting up near 100% usage now. And we're getting near 100 degrees, but we are still turboing to 4.3 gigahertz. Is nice. All right, cool. Why don't we go ahead and fire up a game? I actually, ooh, Jake, I don't know if I actually, I might have lied. I don't have any games installed on here because I think they're on my other drive. CSGO. CSGO? Uh, yeah, but, oh, you know what? We've got a nice fast CPU, so the cache might actually pull it down. Pretty quickly. Uh, don't show this again. Why would I? Why would I want to see this again? All right. Let's see what our CS:GO download speed is here. Oof. That's not that great. Oh yeah, I forgot. My thing is woof. No, I want. I'm... Ooh, Cinebench R20. Sure, yeah, let's grab it. Oh no, isn't it like a stupid Windows Store app or something? Yeah. Well, fortunately, we are. What's it? What's it even called? Microsoft Store. Sheesh. Oh, Roblox. Roblox? What's, what's, where's, where's Roblox? Is that in here? Cinebench app. You see that? You see me search for Cinebench? Did you see that? And it came up with nothing? And then I like the clicked the thing? Oh, so stupid. Uh, no thanks. Why would I want to sign in to get this? Install. Like, especially if I don't have to. Oh, what? Wait, hold on. Is it just telling me that I have to sign in, but I actually don't? Is this still going? I'm going to close this. Uh, discard my changes. Oh, wait, no. I think what's, wow, what's sucking back all the CPU is this download, which is coming down at 60 megabytes a second. So yeah, we're, we're CPU limited. This must just be one that's not particularly uh, multi-threaded. The good news is that we're going to be done in about... Uh, 47 seconds here, so that's nice. This product is installed. Okay, let's just see. See, that is so misleading. I don't have to do this. Here it is. So stupid. All right, we're not going to be able to run this until CSGO is done, but it should be done in about 30 seconds here. So here, why don't I uh, see if anybody sent a super chat that I need to reply to? Oh, this was one of them. Matt says, I'd love to see a Hackintosh build sometime. So would I. We actually tried to collab with the same person that we did on our last Hackintosh build a little while ago. And we sent this individual uh, an 18 core CPU, if I recall correctly, along with a. It was a 7900X. It was a 7900X? So 10 core. We oh, 10 core. Sent an 18 core like oh, okay. So we sent him a 7900X and an LGA 2066 motherboard, and he flaked. Just 
stopped replying to emails. And the thing about Hackintoshing is that, yeah, with enough time, we could probably figure it out. But collaborating with someone who's into the scene is a way more efficient way to, um, to work on stuff like that. So that's what we had tried to do. And we basically got screwed. So I'm not saying we're not going to do it. I'm just saying that we tried, and it didn't work. And so we'll, it'll be later. <laughs> That's, that's the way that's going to be. All right, this is just installing right now. Just about done. Three more seconds. And Cinebench time. So Cinebench R20 is based on a much, much newer version of the software compared to R15, to be specific, five, five versions newer. Um, and it gives you some idea of how well the system should perform in Cinema 4D. Now, there's actually also an unofficial R15 Extreme that's like a community created one um, that's designed to kind of separate the, 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 the men from the boys, so to speak, uh, when it comes to like these huge, many threaded CPUs these days. But um, that's also based on version 15. So this seems like it would be a better bet. I don't know. It does seem like it's, it's definitely intensive. Like, we are throttling all the way down to 3.85 gigahertz now. We're at, oh, we were at 100 degrees. Um, yeah, it's hitting it hard, actually. But it does seem like it's still going to be a really short benchmark. Because there's only a six core processor, and it's still doing pretty well here. Yeah, I can hear it a little. It's not bad, though. Here, you guys, my mic's on here, so. Like the CPU fan's definitely ramping up, but my power supply fan still isn't even on. We're using the 600-watt uh, Corsair. I think it's an 80-plus platinum unit, and it's so efficient that even with this CPU load, the fan's not even spinning, which is pretty cool. Once we hit it with the GPU load, though, it'll definitely start spinning. We can fire up CSGO in a minute here. Not that CSGO is a particularly representative benchmark for the Titan RTX, but... I thought there were games on this drive, and there aren't, and we're live, so it's going to be what it is. You know, you got to have fun. You got to roll with the roll with the punches there. You know. So there you go. We got 3,100 points, which most people won't have a ton of context for because this benchmark has only been out for a couple of days. Neat. What I really want to see, though, is the GPU temperatures when we're in games and the CPU temperatures when we're in games. No, I don't want to open the download page. This is fine. So here's our GPU temperatures. We're sitting at 35 idle. That's perfectly reasonable. But we'd expect that, because look at all this ventilation you've got. Like the GPU, until you start to generate a ton of heat and it starts to kind of recycle that, is basically running in open air right now, because it's all mesh on the top, all mesh along the side where those fans are drawing in fresh air. Game launching? Uh, somebody's asking about availability on this case. Do you know? Oh, I have no idea what the availability of this case is. I only briefly skimmed the email because um, I was like, oh, cool. It's those guys again. That's neat. Guys, let me know, actually, in the comments on this video if you want to, because we don't really do case reviews anymore. But if you guys want to see a return to um, case coverage, this might actually be a way to do it. Just like do a build, right? Lay out some hardware. Get all, get all the tools and like do it. I mean, we can draw a pretty reasonable conclusion about the kind of build that you can do. And it, obviously, it's not going to be to the same depth as Hardware Fanatics or Gamers Nexus or whatever else. But it's, it's a way for us to have some fun with it, make it really like hands-on, really practical. I'm going to practice with You know what? No. I'm going to official match make play here. OK, what, what, what should I do? Yeah, that's two. There. Not competitive. No, no, not competitive. Casual. 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 I am, I am the filthiest casual that ever casualed, Jake. You know this. I'm lucky if I can maintain like one to one kill to death ratio on, in a casual match. And I don't even have a mouse pad right now, in fairness to me. Oh boy, he's eliminating excuses. Man, I should have used the excuse after I lost. That's the problem with blowing your excuse load early. Well, see, now I can't even, I can't even buy things because you just are throwing stuff at me. You're killing me here. Oh, yeah, it's warm up. Never mind. Well, look, I don't, I only, I only practice with bots, David. 
so I don't know these things. Oh, all right, here we go. Brian's probably coming to get his laptop back. His precious. All right, I want to see my GPU temps, about 50 degrees. Oh, did I? Wait, OK, match didn't start yet. OK, yeah, good. Oh, there's no, there's no team damage in casual? All right. Yeah, dual Berettas, like a pro. Yeah, you know it, baby. I'm sorry? I get a burrito if I get a kill with these? OK. Uh, yeah, no, David would get a kill with them. I'm terrorist, right? Oh, crap. Well, because I forgot. And that way, I'll fire at the right people. OK. Come on! Did I even hit him? I hate these games with recoil. Honestly, I can't play games with recoil. You hit him once. No, I know. I hit him on the first shot because I had the crosshairs right on his head, but I didn't go down. <laughs> oh, boy. So you've played Quake 3 Arena with me. I go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you in games where you had the gun actually goes where you point, no problem. Uh, you're better than you. You were wrecking me? You David, were you were there. I was there. You were was, wrecking was he me. wrecking me? No, he wasn't. No, he <laughs> certainly wasn't. What a liar. That is such <laughs> BS. <laughs> yeah, Alex, you were there. Was Jake wrecking me in Quake 3 Arena? No, I'm pretty sure it was me, you, and John that were doing well. I thought David was good, too. Yeah, David was good. Yeah. Ed was also good. Ed's, Ed's good at everything. Yeah, yeah. I hate playing video games with Ed, unless he's on my team, <laughs> in which case it's lots of fun. Hey, my team won. I helped. I did like eight damage to that guy. I think it's 17. All right, I'm trying one more time because I want the free burrito. Oh, I have the bomb. You don't get the burrito. You can drop the bomb. What do you mean I don't get the? You get two chances. Yeah, I get two chances. No, you don't. Who cares? If you get the burrito, you just have no, to I'm getting the. No, you have to do the burrito. Oh, God, it's up to the chat. You already lost. What do you mean I lost? No, if I get a kill, yeah, that's a kill with the dual Berettas. No way. No way. No way. That doesn't count. Oh, come on! <laughs> Did I even hit him? Nope. Didn't even hit him. How did I miss from there? <sighs> well, I think we're done here. Hold on, actually, before we do that, though. So we're sitting up at around 69 degrees. But we also, I don't think, are even like fully utilizing our uh, our power budget here on this card, because this is a pretty this is a pretty banging card here. Yeah, we're at like 80% power. Actually, it's still not bad. It's really quiet, huh? All right. Yes, I wish to stop playing now. I think we're done here. Also, I think we're done with the stream. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Hope you enjoyed this live build. Let us know in the comments if you want to see more of this type of concept where we just grab a case, grab some hardware, throw it together for your viewing pleasure. And uh, don't forget to check out our sponsor for today's video, Private Internet Access. We've got it linked below. It's lmg.gg slash PIA Linus 2. Did I get that right? Yeah. Yes. Private Internet Access is the the thing to use if you want a VPN, basically. Uh, what? No? Hide your Come on. IP hide your true IP address. Whatever. It does things VPN things do. I mean, we've done lots of videos about what VPNs are good for, and it's a good one. So go check it out. So thanks for watching, guys. Dislike if you disliked. Like if you liked. Otherwise, uh, subscribe, like, check out our forum. Check out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. We probably won't have one because I have no idea where to buy it or if it's even available yet. But Wow, that power supply fan never turned on. Sick. Maybe it's just broken. No, no, I don't think it's broken. I mean, it could be broken. Am I in the game? Yeah. I'm not buying you a burrito. No, well, I didn't kill a guy, so I guess. Said no burrito. For no burrito. All right.